Hey YouTube, Chip from Gillikins Island, and obviously I'm not fishing this afternoon. You know, the days are getting a little bit shorter and it's kind of hard to get away after five o'clock, but I sure do miss that daylight savings time. So in some of the videos that I've been doing lately, I've been fishing with live shad. I actually think I enjoy catching shad more than I do the fish that I catch with shad, but that's a different story. You know, one of the struggles that I've had is keeping shad alive, and I finally came up with a solution. It cost me $162, and I'm gonna show you how I put it together right now today. Now guys, if you're anything like me, you like throwing that cast net. Don't lie, because I like doing it myself. But I can tell you, it's nothing more aggravating than when you throw that cast net, get you some bait, and it dies. So let me just kind of tell you what goes on here so you get an idea of what these shad go through. So imagine, if you will, that you and your buddies are going to the Super China Buffet on a Friday night, because they got all you can eat, you know. So you and your buddies, y'all go in there, eat, 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 just make hogs of yourself. <clears throat> so you finally get done you walk out of the restaurant well you already feeling something kind of something's kind of feeling ain't right there ain't something ain't right well your buddy over here he get him a pinch of snuff and then your buddy over here he's trying to explain to his wife why he's gonna be a few minutes late and it ain't going real good and then all of a sudden from out of the blue a huge net comes up on you whoosh, swipes all three of you up well I told you I wasn't feeling real good, so I knew what was going to happen later that night. But now it's happened right now. You and your two buddies, boy, y'all are in a stressful situation. Y'all done had a net come down, grab you up, and now you're getting put in a tank. Can't get out. You know this is it. So what's going to happen? Now, I know what's happened to me already, but now they've done the same thing. And so that tank now has become a septic tank. When I started fishing with shad, I probably did the same thing a lot of people did. I just got the little minnow bucket that I use when I go white perch fishing. You know, it's got the little motor that takes the batteries and you put a few dozen in here. Well, you know what? When no shad get in here, it's just like that septic tank that I was talking to you about me and my buddies were in. Because we done messed in our britches, and I promise you, these shad are going to do the same thing. And that's why you have so many of these fish die immediately. And I think that shad are probably the most difficult fish on earth to keep alive in a confined environment. So what I want to do is I'm going to show you some of the things that I've done in addition to this that I have failed at, and then I'm going to show you what's finally worked for me. So I got to thinking, what have I done wrong? The only thing I could come up with is that maybe that little shiner cooler that I had, maybe it wasn't big enough. So what did I do? I went down to the Walmart, got me one of these ice chests, got a rock to put down in the bottom of it that pumps air into this thing, and then I got another pump that pumps water down. So I thought, man, I got it licked now. Put my shad in here. What's the first thing they did? Went to each corner. Red nose, and then they died. End of story. So I got a buddy of mine down in Tampa, Florida, and he's a big snook fisherman, and he fishes with live bait exclusively. Well, when I've gone with him, what he uses to keep his bait alive is he puts them in these five gallon buckets. And what you got here is a noodle around the top attached with a string that you put on your pants. And man, it works like a charm. You got these holes that just get all the, all the Chinese food out, if you don't mind me saying that. And it keeps the fish really happy. The difference between his fishing and my fishing is he's fishing in a place that's got a lot of current. So it's constantly flushing everything out. Whereas I'm fishing in rivers and lakes where there's no current. And these fish are just sitting up here on the top with all that stuff stirring around. They're getting red nose and they're dying. So that didn't work. So just in case you're keeping score at home, that's 0 for 3. So I decided that, you know what? I got to go big. And I got on the internet and I found the old yellow. Old yellow is a 20 gallon drum. Man, I love it. Got handles, got a screw lid so that I can put a top on. I don't have to worry about the water blowing out on me. This is about 60 bucks. I also got a Tsunami T500 pump. Works like a charm. It's going to draw water from here to pump it up here. So, man, I got out on the water and I was like, man, this is going to be fantastic. Put my old shad in there. What do you think happened? They died just about 15 minutes after I put them in there. So knowing that I needed a filter, I went over to the Walmart and I got this internal power filter. Where did I get it? I got it in the aquarium aisle of all places. This thing works great. It's for 20 to 40 gallons and oh yeah, it's 20. And what you do is you hang this 
inside of your barrel and what you've got, you've got a couple different filters that's going to filter out everything that you're trying to catch, the scales, all the Chinese food. And when you pull this thing out at the end of the day, you're not gonna believe what you caught in this filter. And I can tell you right now, it works great. Now, the one dilemma I had is when I pulled this out of the box, notice that I don't have one of those in my boat, but I got something for you. So let me tell you what I did. I got this inverter that converts DC to AC. Man, it's simple. All you gotta do is plug this into your cigarette lighter, take this, plug it into there, and now you got power. So let me just spend one minute on water. What do I use? I don't use river water. That's one of the things with me. Our river, sometimes it's 85, 90 degrees, and shad are so sensitive to water temperature that I use tap water right out of the hose. The next thing that I do is, is I use some Morton's ice cream salt, and what this does is chills them out, makes them unwind, relax a little bit. It also helps keep their scales in place, puts a little bit of slime back on them, got to use your salt the next thing i use is ammonia clear this is some tablets that i got from walmart and what this is going to do is it's going to control that ammonia that's created by those fish when they mess in the pants hey y'all i hope you've enjoyed this video i'm going to put links in the description below for everything that you saw here today and if you enjoyed this video how about setting the hook on that like button and until then i'll see you next time on gillikins island